Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be going through a step-by-step -step process and how I created this hyper-realistic eye using a reference photo. So get your supplies and let's get started. So for the tools I used for this eye drawing, I have a range of graphite pencils. These are from Derwent, but you don't have to have that brand. Any brand will do. Just have a variety of um, softer and harder leads for the um, different values and ranges. So I used a B, 2B, 4B, 6B, 8B. Um, you could get away with just using a B or HB um, for the lighter tones, 2B or 4B for the mid tones, and 6B to 8B for the darker tones. I did use a Polychromos Faber-Castell black pencil for my darkest blacks in this drawing. You don't need to have this, but I do like using it every now and then uh, to get the really dark, dark look without a lot of shine. For erasers, I use the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser, just any kind of fine tip um, eraser. You can even cut the eraser you have to have a bit of a tip to it to use that. Um, a kneaded eraser, moldable eraser. Um, a gum eraser, this is great for erasing your, um, any kind of outlines that you've done that you didn't want there anymore, or the grid lines, if you did the grid line method for your outline. A pencil sharpener of your choice to keep your pencils nice and sharp. Um, some blending stumps. Um, I like the smaller ones for the finer detail, a sanding block to clean it off with. Um, and then a Q-tip or cotton bud as well for smoothing out areas. I love using soft tissue for the larger background areas or just the larger skin areas to get a nice smooth look, as well as Filbert dry paint brushes. So just a clean dry paint brush. You don't need to have two, even just one type of a, um, a paint brush with a softer tip to smooth out some lines will do. And then of course you need your paper. I used Canson smooth surface paper. This is 70 pound. You can do any size, but I use the 5.5 by 8.5 inch. I did also use, but it's not necessary, um, mechanical pencils just to get the finer detail. This is a 0.3 millimeter. It's really tiny. With an HB lead, it gets the nice, um, tiny little veins on the eye and then I do have a 4B lead in here in a 0.5 millimeter as well for finer areas that I want a bit darker. Again you don't need this but it can be handy to have. You could just use your pencils just keep them sharp. Also I used a jelly roll white pen uh, in number eight um, for the fine details in the eye just to kind of bring out some of the white in there. And then of course your reference photo and I will have this linked in the bottom of where I found it so you guys can go ahead and um, find it and print it off. All right, so let's get started. So I've already gone ahead and I did this rough sketch outline of the eye and I like to tape down my paper to the table to get nice clean lines at the very end. First, I'm going to take my B pencil and I'm going to start to block in the darker areas of the eye, starting with the pupil and then working my way around the edges of the iris. I like to do my drawings in layers, starting with lighter values in pencils and then working my way to the darker values. After I'm done with this first layer, I'm going to go ahead and take my dry brush and blend out that entire first layer nice and smooth. Then I'm going to take a two bead pencil and go over that same area to darken it, adding a little more detail in the areas that are darker. Just remember to keep looking back and forth at your reference photo to get a rough idea of where the detail should be. Again, it doesn't have to be the exact same. Just use the reference photo as a guideline and create your picture the way you want it to look. As you're drawing and you're looking at your reference photo, keep an eye on the direction that lines are going in your reference photo. So when you're doing your pupil and your iris, make sure the lines um, within the iris are going in the same direction. So basically imagine like spokes in a tire. The lines typically go from the center, which would be the pupil, to the outer edges of the iris. As I'm doing the details within the iris, I am making sure to try to keep those highlighted areas nice and white. I will be going through afterwards and lightening some areas up with a kneaded eraser or a gel pen or the mono eraser. I am blending out that area that I just did and cleaning off my dry brush every once in a while just to make sure I'm not smudging any of the graphite onto the lighter areas of the iris. Next, I'm gonna take my blending stump and start to blend some of these areas to get rid of any harsh lines. 
I like to go in a circular motion as opposed to a back and forth motion. Here I'm just demonstrating that a back and forth motion can give you start and stop lines where a circular motion can give you a nice smooth finish. So just remember that there is a place to use back and forth motion, but right now I like to do the circular motions just to make sure it's nice and um, blended smoothly. Here, this is just me demonstrating that you can use the sanding paper to clean off that blending stump every once in a while if it gets too much graphite on it. Next, I'm gonna take a 4B pencil and I'm gonna to start to go over those areas again, building layers, starting with the pupil and again, working my way out, adding the detail as I go. I next decided I do want to use my mechanical pencil um, with the 4B lead here, which I'm demonstrating. It's a 0.5 millimeter, and I'm just going to use that just because I don't want to sharpen my pencil too much. I'm just being lazy. Again, you don't need to use a mechanical pencil. You could just use your normal pencil and just keep it nice and sharp to add these little details here that are around the iris and these little fine lines. I do want to mention that this eye took me probably about eight hours and so I've really compressed this video to try to make it so it's not too long. So don't, um, you know, worry, don't, don't try to rush this. Take your time, pause this video if you need to, to do the steps that I've done. Um, again, this is hyperlapse, like sped up in most areas, you guys. So take your time, pause the video, focus on the detail and just go at your own pace. Don't rush. After adding some of these details in the corner of the eye, I'm taking my dry brush again, smoothing out those lines. Then I'm taking my Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil, which is the really black pencil, and going in the dark areas and starting to build up that darkness within the pupil and the outer areas. With this pencil, you do want to keep it nice and sharp to get those really fine details. This part here I'm just darkening again this is the shadow of the eyelid so you're going to want to darken it quite a bit and bring that shadow into the pupil up at the upper part so it will go darker eventually. I'm going to take my blending stump and blend some of those lines that I've just done which tends to lighten it because it does transfer graphite from one area to another on the paper when you're using a blending stump. So naturally it will lighten the area and you're going to want to go back over it again to darken those areas again which is what I'm doing here with the same polychromos pencil. After adding some of these little squiggly lines and these little fine details within the iris, it's nice to go over it with the blending stump because if you look at the reference photo, a lot of the little details in the eye do look quite blurred. So taking the blending stump can help blur that area. I'm going to work on the reflection now of the eye. So this part here, these fine lines are actually the reflection of the eyelashes. So I'm using my polychromos pencil to get a nice black line look for that. I'm also using a piece of paper under my hand, as you can see here. It's really to prevent the smudging of graphite under my hand as I'm moving my hand around and also to prevent the transfer of oils from my hand onto the paper because that can cause the uh, graphite to stick to the oils on the paper and make it very difficult to remove. So I'm going to take my B pencil now, give a little light, light shade in there, and I'm going to continue to use that same pencil on the sclera of the eye, being careful not to, um, you know, get that reflection part, which is sort of that rectangular area of the eye. I'm trying to keep that part as white as possible, smoothing out that graphite, that base layer of the sclera, because you don't want it to stay white. You want to give it a little bit of a base shade um, to add some value and dimension to it. I'm going to go in with my 2B now and I'm going to darken a little bit of those areas again looking at my reference photo to see where these fine little details are and just add those with my 2B pencil. I'm now taking my polychromos pencil and just going in some of these areas and adding a few more lines just to sort of give me an idea where those lashes are going to fall and then I've switched again to the 2B here adding more of those details and smoothing them out because if you look at the reference they are quite blurred looking. 
taking again my 4B now, adding a little bit more of that darkness along the line of the waterline, and then using my dry brush to just smooth out those and add a little bit of graphite to those areas. I've got my polychromos pencil again and going back over some of those darker areas that lightened up a bit after um, blending them with the blending stump. Next, I'm gonna take my white jelly roll pen and start adding these little squiggly lines within the iris, um, just to add a little bit more of the details. Um, there is sort of no rhyme or reason as to which way I'm doing this. I'm just sort of adding them, looking at the reference, seeing where there is more clusters. Then I'll go over afterwards with some more graphite, just to add a little bit more detail in there and to bring out the white part that I've just added. I'm just taking the mechanical pencil now, adding a little bit of the detail next to those white lines. Then I'm going to add more of that dark black from the Polychromos pencil in there. Using the kneaded eraser and the mono eraser can help give you a little bit more of those white lines that you need and clean up some of the areas that may have been covered with some graphite through using your blending stump. I find I go back and forth a lot. I'll see something that I need to change and add more depth or darkness to, and then I'll need to lighten something. So once you're working on one area, you might feel like you need to go back at the end and go over it again and just touch it up. So I'm just taking my B pencil again and going over some of that area of the white sclera of the eye to make it a little bit darker to bring out that reflection of the eye a little bit more. So after blending it out with my dry brush, I'm gonna take a little bit of graphite and a blending stump and just rub my blending stump in the graphite to add a little bit of these details here in the sclera. And then using my mechanical pencil to go over some of those details again that I did previously to darken them up a little bit. Using a blending stump that already has graphite on it is a great way to add little details like freckles if you're doing a portrait um, or even just these little details in the sclera. So keep that in mind when you uh, have a dirty blending stump. Sometimes I like to keep one end of it dirty and the other end I'll keep clean by rubbing it on some sandpaper to clean it off. Just using my kneaded eraser and the Tombow Mono eraser just to lift up some of that graphite that got in the reflection. And I'm just using my polychromos pencil here to add more black to the bottom of the iris. Then I'm gonna use the same pencil to add a little bit more to the corner of the eye. And now I'm gonna use my white jelly roll pen to add some of those white highlights to the corner of the eye. Next, I'm gonna take that 0.3 millimeter mechanical pencil and add those little tiny fine veins within the sclera. After putting down my first layer of the veins, I'm just going to take my um, blending stump, blend them out a little bit to blur them because if you see in the reference photo, they are quite blurred out. And then the dry brush can help with that as well. So in this, this is just my 4B mechanical pencil there that I was just adding a little bit more of that um, graphite to the area where it was darker and smoothing out with a dry brush again and the blending stump. I'm just going to take the polychromos pencil again and go through and add a little bit more of those lashes, darken them up again, and then blend out a little bit of the sclera again to get it nice and smooth. Next we're going to take the B pencil again and start working on a base layer around the eye. I like to go in and block in the darker areas first, um, just so I know which areas are gonna go darker later on after I start a base layer of the B pencil. And as I'm creating this base layer, I'm also paying attention to where the areas are gonna be a lot lighter and where those highlights are going to be and avoid putting graphite in that area. And then I'm gonna take a soft tissue and just blend out all of that area around the eye to make it nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna take my 2B pencil and start to darken up the crease of the eye and where the shadows are going to be. And then I'm gonna take my dry brush and smoothen out that area. 
and then start to build it up again with the same pencil. Here I'm going to take my 8B pencil and I'm really going to start to get that dark crease blocked in because it's going to be quite black. After laying that layer down, again, smoothing it out with the dry brush. And then I'm going to take the polychromos pencil again and go over that same area to really get it nice and dark. And I'm just starting to block in where the eyelashes are, are quite blurred right here, but where they sort of meet the eyelid. And then I'm going to lightly go in with my mechanical pencil here and just sort of lightly block in a few of these hairs, the eyelashes, and a few of those random strands of the eyebrow. And I'm going to blend this part out here with the blending stump and just add a little bit of smoothness and avoid um, any harsh lines that I have there. I'm going to use that same blending stump to actually make these blurred lashes. So I'm just transferring the graphite from the blending stump just onto the paper and they get sort of this blurred look. And I'm just adding a little bit more of the um, 2B pencil now actually to this part and then smoothing it over with some tissue paper. Next I'm going to take my 4B pencil and I'm going to start adding in some of that darkness and that shadow underneath the eye and a little bit of those wrinkles and those little fine details. After I've put a little bit of the graphite down, I do like to smooth it out a little bit with the dry brush as I go. And one thing I do like to do is make sure I really get the bottom eyelid um, and the upper eyelid really, um, just the values and the shading right. So going in and trying to get the, the right values where they are, the right highlights where they are before you do the lashes is really important because once you put the lashes down, you don't wanna to have to go in and start blending and smoothing out the bottom parts of the eye and then start to smudge the eyelashes that you just put down. Just going over that soft tissue again, smoothing out the area, and then now I'm gonna go in with my 6B and go in even darker because if you look at the reference photo, this area is quite dark. I found myself having to go in more and more, adding more layers to it because I was afraid to go too dark, but don't be afraid to go dark. Um, the dark values are really what bring out the depth and those details in the eye and really make it look realistic. I'm going to go in with my polychromos pencil here and start to really darken up those eyelashes up at the top upper eyelid. And using the same pencil, I'm going to start to add in the eyelashes. So just going over the lines that I had previously drawn, just slowly and carefully, and then adding a little bit more black in there, really paying attention to the curvature of the eyelashes. And as I'm adding those eyelashes, I realize that I do need to go a little darker here uh, where the crease of the eyelid is. And so I'm just adding a little bit more with a 6B pencil just to darken it up a little bit before um, adding my eyelashes so I'm not going to smudge my eyelashes when I blend out the area. So I'm using the 6B pencil to add a little bit more texture to the skin here. So if you look in the reference photo, it's not completely smooth. It does have a little bit of um, little spots here and there, little shadows, especially on the eyelid where those blurred lashes are. And just take your blending brush and blend that out nice and smooth. Use the tissue as you need to. So I'm starting to add in some graphite on the lower lid. I find I do jump around a lot, especially with smaller drawings. Just I look at it as a whole and just add things as I see it so that I remember as opposed to just working on one corner and working my way down unlike a portrait, which is what I would do. But for this smaller drawing, I do jump around a lot. So 
Um, as you see things that you feel like you need to add more value to it, add more graphite, just do it as you see it and just sort of go with the flow. There's no rhyme or reason here. You just sort of draw it as you go. Just smoothing out those layers I just did on the bottom lid with the tissue and then I'm going to go in and start working on those lashes again. I'm going to use my mechanical pencil to just do a light layer first to get sort of the direction and the flow of those corner lashes. And then once I'm happy with that then I'll go ahead and darken them up afterwards. So I'm just working on again the lower lashes. Really pay attention to the curvature and that they overlap um, each other. They don't just kind of go straight out. They kind of curve downward and overlap and come out at different areas. And again, I'm going over those random sparse hairs there. And now I'm starting to darken it out with the polychromos pencil. Again, take your time on this part, go nice and slow. It looks like I'm going fast, obviously, because it's in a hyperlapse mode, but I actually am going very slow, making sure I'm following the lines um, that I had previously drawn to get a nice, um, a nice smooth look. And also trying to wisp it out at the end to get a nice tapered end to the lash. Um, lashes are naturally thicker at the root and then they get quite fine at the very tip. So trying to achieve that with a pencil, use a nice sharp pencil for this. Next, I'm going to take my 2B pencil and I'm going to start to darken up the waterline in this area right here. I'm going to switch over to the Polychromos pencil and add a few more of those little tiny details under the waterline and in the crease here, and then also extend that darkness up at the top of the eyelid here. You'll want to gradually lighten the pencil a little bit in that crease to make it look like it's not one just solid dark line. And then I'm just going to take the same pencil and just darken up this area here and extend those lashes a little higher up on the lid. And then add more of the graphite to this area here to darken it up. Then I'm going to take my blending stump and start to really blur out these lashes here. They're quite blurred in the reference photo so by using the blending stump to smudge it all out it will give sort of a blurred effect. I'm going to take my black pencil again and just darken up that line along the waterline and then smudge out the graphite a bit with the blending stump. And then using the same blending stump again to blur out some of those lashes up at the top. And then I'm going to use the polychromos pencil to add those little eyebrow hairs, darken them up a little bit, and then darken up some of those lashes. And I'm just using the blending stump to blend that upper eyelid crease again and where the eyelashes meet the eyelid. And I'm going to add a little bit of detail here with the polychromos pencil again, just where that blurred effect is and add a little bit of the, the darker value to that corner of the, the crease there at the, the outer edge of the eye. And then using the blending stump to add a little bit more graphite to the areas around the eye. Here I realized I did need to darken it up a little bit under the eye. Just when I thought it was darker before I did the lashes, I still felt like I needed it to go a little darker. And I'm just gonna go use my eraser just to thin out some of the lashes that it may have been a little bit too thick. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of detail here with my pencil, some of those little random details that are within the eye. And then um, adding some of the highlights with my Tombow Mono eraser. So just watch for the areas where there are the highlights and then just erase some of the graphite there using the eraser or the kneaded eraser can work as well. This eraser is great for adding little hairs and fine wrinkles. I'm just adding a little bit more of the highlights here and the detail in the inner corner of the eye and really emphasizing that, that crease underneath the eye there. Now I'm taking my kneaded eraser to lift some more of the graphite and add a little bit more highlight and detail and texture to the skin. I'm going to go in with my 8B pencil now and darken underneath the eye just a little bit more. 
Adding this layer of graphite to the eye can really help to make those little white lines and wrinkles start to pop and give more texture to the skin and make it look much more three-dimensional. So I'm just going to take my blending stump now and um, just soften some of those lines and add a little bit more blurred effect to the lashes. Then I'm going to take my 6B pencil here, darken the waterline a little bit more and then smooth it out. And then taking my mechanical pencil and just darkening that line again. Now I've got the polychromos pencil and I'm just darkening those lashes a little bit more. So looking at this, I noticed the sclera need to darken a little bit more. So I'm taking in my 2B pencil and putting some graphite down on a scrap piece of paper. Then I'm just going to take my dry brush and rub it into that graphite just to pick up a little bit onto the brush. Then I'm going to just use that tool just to lightly smooth it in. It's hard to see in this footage, but it is giving a little bit more of a darker shade to the sclera. So basically now I'm just going in and doing some final little touch-ups, adding a little bit of highlights where I feel like they needed them and fixing a few wrinkles and adding a bit of graphite and darkness in areas where it needed a little bit more shadow. So just take a step back from your, your piece of art and just have a look at it and do your final touch-ups. It's really hard to really determine a piece of artwork done. It's easy to just look back on something that you think is done and still think that you could go in and, and fix a few things. Um, that's how I felt about this eye after I finished it. I still feel like I could probably blurt a few areas out a little bit more, but just do the best you can and um, have fun with it. That's, that's the best part about creating art is having fun. So that's basically it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video on how I created this hyper-realistic eye. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think and let me know if you have any suggestions for future tutorials. Thanks so much for hanging in there and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.